Welcome. This session is on English as a reflection of modern times. I hope that by the end of this session, you would be able to understand how modern English reflects the times. Well, my dear students, words actually are symbols. They are symbols through which human beings express themselves. They express their thoughts and their ideas. Words, of course, designate, you know, um, the, the, the things, the culture, the objects that they, you know, um, that, that surround the people who use those words. And it is very interesting that the date of a word when it enters into a language generally, generally corresponds with the entry of that item or object or thing or experience or observation or whatsoever it is that it stands for, that it represents the date when that enters into the language. Simply putting it, you know, whenever something new happens, whenever there is a new experience, there is a new observation, alongside, you know, comes a new word. So, you know, if we go slightly back, early 19th century, you know the word horsepower. Clearly tells that some form of mechanical power that needs to be measured in familiar terms, you know, the power of a horse, the speed of a horse. So, you know, this is how logically, you know, words are sometimes created. The appearance in the language of words like, for example, railway, locomotive, turntable, about 1835 tells us that steam railways were then coming in. So, you know, Whenever there is a new invention, whenever there is a new discovery, whenever there is a step in the field of science, whenever something new is created, it is labeled, it is named, it is, you know, um, given a title, and that becomes an addition to the language. And that word does not remain in isolation. A lot of related words are created, you know, to support the whole new domain that is created, you know, the vocabulary that would cover all the aspects of the related observations or experiences or, you know, um, happenings or the objects. Anyways, it was in 1839 the words, for instance, photography, you know, um, were, was, you know, used with a lot of other words that appeared, you know, to support. Camera, film, enlargement, emulsion, focus, shutter, and light meter. So, you know, a word does not come alone. It has a lot of other words because... The event or the happening or the object is not over, it cannot be oversimplified that there would be only the demand for a single word. How it processes, how it works, how it operates would demand for a lot of other words. In the same way, my dear students, look at the word concrete. In the sense of a mixture of crushed stone and cement, if we look back at the history, we would trace it somewhere in 18. 34. However, it was reinforced concrete in, a, you know, in, in a new expression that was only during the 20th century. Concrete examples, for example. In the last quarter of the 19th century, an interesting story of progress is told through, you know, this set of words. Typewriter, telephone, apartment house, drop forging, motorcycle, feminist, fundamentalist. Each of these words has a huge story related to it of human process of development, of the scientific developments that took place during the times, of the intellectual developments that took place during the times, of the social developments and changes that came, you know, for instance, reflected through the word feminist. It was about 1910, my dear students, that we have words like post-impressionist. Post-impressionist, the term that was introduced in 
art. Again, you know, when the nature of art would change, when a new type of, you know, um, work would be introduced, then it needs to be named. Same happens in psychology. We have Freudian, we have intelligentsia, you know, um, as a general term that designates for the class uh, to which a kind of a superior culture, you know, is associated with. What I want to say is language, any language, is a reflection of its people and its times. And so is the case with English language. So the language, English language, in the 19th and the 20th century is a mirror of these centuries. It reflects all the happenings that were taking place during this time. Language keeps on changing. And all of us know tomorrow will bring new words in it.